Dear Diary, Greetings. I invested the last few days in analyzing what I believe to be the greatest economic fallacy of our time or at least one of the greatest economic fallacies of our time namely economic growth is the solution to all our problems and mind you that is not phase X of our plan for a happy world that is all of our plan now how can that be I believe that our greatest failure as a society as a collective is our inability to ask the question the great question and then what the question and then what why do I say this is a great question because the success or otherwise of any strategy is decided upon the logical end to which the strategy takes us well the logical end of any of us as individuals of our society indeed of our planet of our star that is the Sun possibly of all of universe is just one death but then we don't really need to take that as the logical end for the planning purposes for planning purposes we decide upon a horizon and do not plan beyond that horizon but up till that horizon we plan and plan well so for example let's look at my horizon for my personal financial plan I believe that that horizon is a few years after my death shortly after my death after you know all the estate has gone to the people that it should go to and they have established themselves into their financial plans my financial plan ends what about the horizon for the planner of the human world or for any of our countries that you know 20 30 40 50 years horizon is too short a horizon it's too close to be a viable horizon what then is the accepted horizon from the planning perspective for the planners of our world of our country almost all of them economists do they have an agreed upon horizon to the best of my knowledge no in the absence of just such an agreed upon horizon what uh, the planners the economists uh, that are supposed to plan for the world or for our country they seem to be uh, creating an impression is that their solution is forever their solution of forever economic growth is viable as a solution forever now could that be so I don't think so why forever economic growth 
means that an economy whether that be of the world of uh, the nation of a household whatever that grows forever which means the production and I use the word rather loosely here the production of the goods and services increases forever now if the production increases forever the consumption must also increase forever otherwise what's going to happen to that production now how can the consumption increase forever only if the consumerism or consumption per capita increases forever or the human population increases forever or preferably both now is that possible could that be possible for that we'll have to go into a little bit of geometry and a little bit of arithmetic all our processes all our economic processes all human processes really are linear what do I mean by that what I mean is that the source and the sink is not the same for any process so let's take an example of this pen right here this was a, a, a majority of the stuff that has gone into making this was sitting as some kind of a liquid deep down under the surface of earth then somebody pumped out the crude oil and after some processing and with a lot of other things this was one of the things that came out now I'm going to be using it and then throwing it when I throw it it will probably end up in some kind of a landfill true it began its life from under the earth's surface and it went back under the earth's surface but not at the same place not in the same form that is the source and sink is not the same the starting point and the ending point in terms of the form of this material is not the same this is true of all economic processes of all human processes and that's why they're linear processes let's look at one or two natural processes ecological processes cyclical processes circular processes yeah mm. water this water began its life from the ocean you know all the seas and oceans are interconnected so I can use the word from the ocean so from the ocean there was evaporation the clouds formed the clouds moved in land the rains happened the water flowed down we have tapped somewhere in the middle and now it's in my glass after passing through my system it's probably gonna go into the sewerage system which as the case with most of our sewage systems it actually goes into surface water sources so this will probably also go somewhere there and eventually it will flow into the ocean it might actually or part of it might actually get evaporated from my body or from the spot where I am gonna pee some of it off and it's gonna be 
forming a part of some cloud and then maybe move further inland and then you know the rain will happen there and it will flow, flow again from there. However, after whatever detours it does, this water or most of the molecules or all the molecules at some or the other time of the water which I just drank are going to end up into the ocean. And then again, there will be evaporation, clouds, rain, flow. 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 Yeah, that was the idea. This cycle goes on indefinitely. Ad nauseum, ad infinitum. And that's what makes it sustainable. That's what makes it go on forever. Because the source and sink of the same form of stuff is the same. The water comes always in a liquid form into the ocean and it's evaporated. And then it follows the cycle. That is not true of this. That is also not true of um, this some shiny stuff you see. I presume this is steel or aluminium, some metal. Yeah. This was formed as a part of a human linear cycle. A lot of earth was dug, ore was carried over to some place. Some of it typically between 1 and 20 percent and very often less than 1 percent was used, refined into a metal. Rest of it was thrown away. Even that which was refined and used, that is with me and after some time it's gonna again be thrown away. There's a hell of a lot of stuff which doesn't go back to the original condition from where it started at the beginning of the cycle. Therefore, this linear cycle will keep on depleting the source and will keep on expanding, increasing the sink. Now, anyone with half a frontal lobe must know that any consistently growing linear process, any consistently growing linear process cannot indefinitely be contained, cannot indefinitely be contained in a limited space, which is our earth, a sphere. Now, to, an, to know a little more about this, dear diary, you may want to um, watch this little movie, 20 minute movie, How Stuff Works. You can see the link right on the screen right now. And about consistently increasing linear processes you can watch a series uh, it's actually a series of videos which is you know the same lecture which is divided into parts by somebody called dr albert bartlett 
and the title is the most important video you will ever see or something like that you can see the title uh, you can see the URL for that too on the screen right now so why does this elementary math this little arithmetic and little geometry you know something which probably we learnt before fifth standard um, but why does it escape these learned economists rather capacious brains why does it escape them I don't know I don't know whenever somebody talks about any of these problems any of these problems you know about uh, about say peak oil or peak food or, or or any other such issue the answer typically is a variant of this answer the markets will find a way or the technology will find a way and in any case technology are is considered a subset of markets it is developed as a part of market demand so the answer really is well the market will find a way now what I fail to understand is that to me this sounds like the response coming from a priest not that coming from a scientist or an empiricist or a mathematician or, or, or anyone else devoted to knowledge this is clearly a response from someone devoted to a dogma you know something bad happens a religious leader will tell me oh don't worry don't be too sad God willed it anything great happens anything good happens to me thank God because he gave that to you you know I'm not picking bones at least not today with the believers uh, with religious people but this answer is very clearly that coming from a priest I find that economists uh, trust markets more than a practicing economist in other words an investor does they trust technology more than a technologist or an engineer does. and I should know because my kitchen fires burn through my good bad or ugly uh, efforts as an investor I left my job five years back and since then my kitchen has been running only on my capabilities good bad average whatever as an investor and to me I don't trust markets for everything I as an investor have to work with the markets to find a solution for myself okay that was about a practicing e economist as it were where did I get the money to actually invest because I was working in a job which I got in the strength of my training as an engineer so as, an, as a technologist as somebody whose field of work was really based upon physics I really don't I really trust technology so much because technology has its own uh, its own uh, you know waiting periods just as a writer's block just like I, I can't find words sometimes when I speak, speak to you dear diary 
technology also cannot find immediate solutions. So, so I really think that this is not looking good. This is really not looking good. Forever economic growth is not the solution. And I'm sorry to announce to all those who trust our economist planners dictum that economic growth is the solution to all our problems. I announce to those of us that we are being led up the shit creek. Goodbye, dear diary.